I'm Dr. Khan. I'm a gastroenterologist at Houston Northwest Medical Center Hospital. And the topic of our discussion today is hepatitis C. While taking the history from patient, it's important to consider the people who are at the high risk of having hepatitis C infection. Uh, people who received blood transfusion or blood product before 1987, they have a 90% chance of contacting hepatitis C virus. Uh, people with a drug abuse, almost 80% chance that, that they might have contacted hepatitis C virus. Patient on chronic uh, kidney dialysis, 10% chance. Uh, infant born to uh, infected mother, they have about 6% chance. Uh, people who have uh, tattoos, uh, body piercing, uh, co cocaine use, they have a 4% chance. Uh, hepatitis C virus can also uh, be transmitted sexually in 1-2% to 2 cases. During history taking process, if it is found that patient has been exposed to hepatitis C virus infection, 85% of patient out of that number can develop chronic uh, hepatitis and almost 2-30% to 30 of patient can develop cirrhosis of liver. Uh, these patients can uh, have a decompensated liver with all the s signs and symptoms of s cirrhosis, a uh, 4 percent patient can develop hepatoma. Uh, majority of these patients remain asymptomatic, uh, but after uh, the 20 years, 15 years, they can start having signs and symptoms related with the cirrhosis of liver, which include generalized weakness, uh, tiredness, and malnutrition. Uh, they can be anemic because of loss of blood. Uh, they can have elevated liver function tests and complaining of itching if they are jaundiced. Uh, they can develop ascites, that means distension of the abdomen with a peritoneal fluid. Uh, the, they can present with the upper GI bleeding, uh, that means they come to emergency room with a vomiting uh, blood or passing black tarry stool. They can develop spider angioma, like a capillary type of lien on the uh, chest and on the back. Uh, they can present with a uh, redness in their palm, which we call as a primal erythema. Once we suspect that the patient has been at a high risk, uh, performing initial screening testing like a ALT, which is a liver enzyme, and anti-HVC, which is a blood test, uh, can give us a guidance that the patient has uh, been exposed and has contracted hepatitis C viral infection. 50% um, of these people who have uh, hepatitis C antibody positive, they tend to have a normal liver function test. Uh, confirmation is required in those patients. Uh, the blood is sent for the RNA to confirm the diagnosis. Then the viral load also is done, which is another blood test to see how much viral infection they carry in their blood. Uh, also, it's important to do the genotype. Genotyping is important because certain genotypes like a 2 and 3, uh, they can be very easily treated. Uh, what is the another uh, genotype like a 1, uh, 4, 5, and 6, they are uh, relatively hard to treat. In the United States, most of the cases we found is genotype 1A and 1B, which is 36% and 34%. Uh, genotype 2 and 3, it varies from 8 to 9%. Genotype 3 and 4, uh, in about 8 to 5% of the cases. So mostly, uh, genotype 1A and 1B is more prevalent in the United States. Genotyping for, for a patient is very important. Uh, because that way we can explain to our patient what's the prognosis and how long patient will be treated. Genotype 2 and 3 uh, respond very well to the treatment and need about 24 weeks of the treatment and the cure rate is about 80 to 90 percent. Genotype 1, 4, uh, they are relatively hard to treat. Uh, the treatment is for about 48 weeks and the cure rate is about 50 percent. Initial blood testing for hepatitis C viral infection, a viral load, genotype, uh, almost confirm the diagnosis of hepatitis C. 
Uh, further blood testing is also required, which includes CBC and the platelet count. Platelet count usually tend to drop in this patient because of hypersaplinism. Uh, liver function tests can be elevated. Uh, checking for PT and INR, alpha fetoprotein, doing the urine analysis, and the CAT scan of the abdomen to look into the possibility of hepatoma. Uh, and the most gold standard method of checking for the prognosis and staging of the disease is liver biopsy. There are certain contraindications of doing liver biopsy, especially if the platelet count is below 50,000. Patient has a elevated PT and INR, which cannot be corrected with the fresh frozen plasma. Uh, if patient is morbidly obese, uh, patient has ascites, that means they have got peritoneum uh, abdomen uh, filled with a fluid. Uh, if the patient is a Jehovah Witness, uh, patient has a history of hemophilia, uh, or patient has an obvious uh, late stage. Before the liver biopsy is performed, certain instructions are given to the patient. They should not take any aspirin and Plavix five days prior to performing the uh, liver biopsy. Uh, he comes nothing by mouth. Uh, then we use the local anesthetic to numb the right side of the chest where the needle is supposed to be inserted for performing the liver biopsy. And usually about one to two centimeter of small tiny uh, liver piece is aspirated. Uh, the specimen is sent to pathologist for further uh, staining and uh, determining the staging of the liver disease. Uh, patient is usually kept in bed for about eight hours and observed uh, about his uh, vital signs. Uh, he's also advised not to take any aspirin, uh, Plavix, or any other blood thinning medication for following five days, and we prescribe uh, pain medication if he feels any pain. As we discussed earlier, liver biopsy is a gold standard method of staging the disease. Uh, however, there could be a sampling error, but this is a relatively good method to s tell the patient what how far uh, the disease has. After the patient has been confirmed uh, having contracted hepatitis C viral infection, uh, we spend time with the patient, explain them about the side effects of medication. Uh, if the patient is pregnant, uh, we tell patient to wait till uh, baby is delivered. Uh, if patient has a male partner, we always advise them to get themselves checked up and perform safe sex. Uh, typically, side effect could be like a flu-like symptom, generalized aches and pains, lack of sleep, they can become anemic. Uh, sometimes the patient can develop depression. Uh, they can complain of joint aches and pains, and they are relatively more prone to uh, other infections. Presently, the treatment for hepatitis C viral infection is standardized. We are using pegantofiron and ribavirin combination for patient with a genotype 2 and 3 is at 24 weeks of the treatment. And the, as we discussed earlier, uh, the prognosis and the, and the cure rate is about 80 to 90 percent. However, genotype 1A and 1B, which is relatively more common in the United States, the cure rate is about 50 percent, and the treatment is for about 48 weeks. Uh, a lot of new work has been done. Uh, presently, we are involved with a clinical trial in which we are using new agents, and we hope that there will be relatively better treatment available, and especially uh, in cases uh, of genotype 1, A, and B, which are more prevalent in the United States. And as we discussed earlier, the cure rate is about 50 percent. And the last uh, treatment is uh, liver transplant, uh, which is quite complicated and difficult process to go through.